it's summer. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a doll TV, doll size DVD cases, and the little mini doll size DVD discs. So let's get started. A box of some sort. Mine is from a nail polish set from e.l.f. and I just cut the little top off that used to hang it up on the shelves at the store. Some tape, or like masking tape or painter's tape, and this is just to cover up the parts that you don't want to paint. You're gonna need a paintbrush, I'm just using a cheap one. A cup of water to rinse off your paintbrush with, and some black paint. And the box can be any size, and this one has a plastic screen in it, but it doesn't have to. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna tape around here so that this plastic part doesn't get painted on. So right now I'm just going to paint all the parts of this box that aren't black and I might even go over back over the black parts because there's some white writing and also because if it's a different shade of black it might look a little weird and I'm not going to tape it up. The bottom's already taped up so I'm not going to untape it but I'm not going to tape up the top and you're going to see why later. You might also have to do a few coats of black on that depending on how dark it was before. Like mine, I'm definitely going to have to do a couple more coats because you can still see the colors underneath. I'm going to be using cardboard from a Keurig K-Cup box, but you can use any cardboard you want. But it's a lot thinner, so when it folds, it's probably going to stay shut longer. So the DVD is 8 centimeters by 4.5 centimeters, so I'm going to make it about the same size. Anywhere around there, if you want to make it a little bigger, you can. And now I'm just going to trace a bunch of those on the cardboard. So I have traced 5 DVDs, and now I'm just going to cut them out. I also have this scrap piece of cardboard and it is one and a half centimeters wide and I'm going to cut it right here so that it's five centimeters long and this is going to be the TV remote. So the first thing we're going to do is to go into Google Images and type in the movies that we want. My first example is going to be Despicable Me, so I'm going to type in Despicable Me DVD. Then I'm going to pick the image with the front and back of the DVD case and save it on my computer. Next I'm going to type in Despicable Me DVD disc and then I'll pick whichever one I like best and save it. For the picture that will go on the screen of the TV, usually you can just search up the name of the movie like Despicable Me screen, but I wanted the scene with Agnes and her stuffed unicorn, so I searched Despicable Me Agnes and saved the picture. Now if you can't find a picture you like, you can find the trailer for your movie on YouTube and take a screenshot with your computer. On a Mac laptop or computer, just press the keys Command, Shift, and 4, and then you can drag your cursor into a square to take a screenshot. Then my screenshot is automatically saved onto my desktop. If you're not sure how to take a screenshot on your computer, just search on the internet how to take a screenshot with an HP computer or something like that. Now I'm going to be using Adobe Photoshop to resize the images. You can use any photo editing software such as PicMonkey, but I'm going to be using this one. First I'm going to make the DVD covers, so I'm going to open a new project with a width of 8 centimeters and a height of 4.5 centimeters. Then I'm going to open a file which will be one of the DVD cover pictures. I've selected the move tool on the top left side and I'm going to drag the picture into the window with the blank DVD cover. Then from there I'll resize it by dragging the transform controls down to size. I'll hold down the shift key so that it stays proportionate and so it won't size weird when I make it smaller. Once 
Once I'm done, I'll click the check mark button and save it in the JPEG format. Then I'll just resize the rest of the DVDs the same way. For some of them near the end of resizing, I wouldn't hold down the shift key and I just use the side controls to stretch the images so that they fit perfectly. Luckily they didn't stretch too weirdly so the picture still looked good. For the DVD remote, I'm going to start a new project in Photoshop that will have a width of 5cm and a height of 1.5cm. Then I'll just search up the image of a TV remote in Google Images and save it then resize it just like I did for the DVD covers. The only thing I did differently was that I rotated the picture in Photoshop so that it was sideways. Now I'm going to be resizing the DVD discs. I made a new project the same size as the DVD case. Later on, I made it a bit bigger because I wasn't able to fit all of the DVDs on one sheet, but you want to keep it the size of the DVD cases in the beginning so that you can size the DVD discs correctly. Next, I changed the ruler units to centimeters by double clicking on the ruler so that I could evenly divide the DVD case in half. To get the blue line, I just clicked and dragged from the ruler. Then I just opened the DVD disc pictures and resized them. Once I'd made the first one my desired size, which takes up the main center space of half of the DVD case, I dragged the other discs over top of the first one and resized them to the same size. Sometimes I'd lower the opacity so that I could see both of the discs, and then once I'd resized it, I'd set the opacity back to 100. Here's where I expanded the canvas size, and then I used the paint bucket tool to change the new canvas part to white to match the rest of the canvas. Finally, I'm going to be resizing the images for the TV screen. I opened a new project and had the dimensions in inches this time. Although when you do this, you should make it about one centimeter or half an inch bigger on each side than the original size of the TV screen opening, because that way you won't have any white parts sticking out. You'll see later on when I put mine in the TV, because I forgot to expand the size so there's a bit of white sticking out. Of course, if you're just sticking the TV screen picture on top of your box, the size won't really matter. Then I went into Open Office, which is like Microsoft Word, to put all of my images onto a couple of pages so that I could print them all without wasting a ton of paper. To insert an image, I clicked Insert, Picture from File, and then I clicked the image that I wanted to insert from the pop-up window. When the picture goes into the Word document, it won't be the correct size. So in order to fix that, I right-clicked on the picture, and for Mac users, you'll have to hold down the Control key on your keyboard while clicking with your mouse or trackpad. And then I click the picture word that shows up on the little pop-up thing, and I resize it to the DVD cover size, which is 8 centimeters by 4.5 centimeters. Then I did that for the rest of the pictures. When I resized the picture with the DVD disc pictures, I resized it to 10 centimeters by 6.5 centimeters, which is what the size of the canvas was in Photoshop after I had expanded it. When you go to print, make sure you print in color, and you only print one copy, and that you don't print two-sided so that you don't accidentally have the picture of a disc stuck to the back of a picture on a screen, because I almost did that. And make sure you print all of the pages instead of just one, if you have more than one page. And make sure in the Word document, you don't have any pictures selected, and you just click on the white part as if you were going to start typing to fix that, to make sure that none are selected. Otherwise, if you have a picture selected or clicked on, it would only print that single picture, and you'll know if this works if the preview that it shows in the little print um, page, which I have a pink arrow pointing to, shows all of the pictures on it and not just one. So if it just looks like a blank piece of paper with a picture on it in that little preview, that means it's not good. But if it shows all of them like it does on the screen, like it shows for mine, then you're good. And then you can just print it and cut everything out. And then I'll show you what happens next. So as of now, I've cut out all the pieces and I'm just gluing them on with white glue onto pieces of cardboard and I traced for the discs, I traced the cardboard around the pieces of paper after I cut them out and I didn't cut the hole in just because it would be too hard. So I'm just gluing everything together and the DVDs, they're a little bit smaller than the cardboard so after everything dries, I'm just going to 
trim it to size and then it'll look great. For the DVDs, normally I take a little bit of sticky tack, put it on the back and stick it in like I did on this one, just to fit on the back there. But since I don't have any, I'm just going to use tape. And when I cut out the screens, I left some paper, like a paper border around just because I'm going to put it inside the doll TV and I didn't want the picture to get cut off so I'm just going to be doing that. Just going to get some tape, doesn't matter what kind, I'm just using scotch tape and hopefully I can peel it off carefully later so I don't, I'm not going to press it down super tightly and I'm just kind of going to put tape on the edges carefully and so here's the sticky part and I'm going to slide this into the box. This is a little tricky. I'm gonna get it into the spot that I want. And then I'm just smoothing it down. And ta-da! Maleficent is in the TV! That is how you make all of those. And thank you guys so, so much for watching. Please subscribe for my next video so that you'll be notified when I upload it. And I'll see you guys all next time. Bye! I'm gonna go see the world's ugliest potato. <laughs> Why bother? I'm already looking at the world's ugliest potato right now.